Hello and a very warm good morning to everyone present here. And the topic that we are going to begin with today is writing skills. So what are basically writing skills? Now, writing in the total communication process just includes 9% of the total communication process. We have, you know, uh, the whole communication process is a combination of listening, reading, speaking and writing. So these are the LSRW skills. And you might see that writing, though constitutes the smallest portion, though has the smallest contribution in the entire communication process, yet becomes very important. And why is this writing skill important? Let's try to understand that. Fine. So let's begin with understanding what are these writing skills basically. So these are the skills that we use to write effectively and succinctly, right? So a good writer is someone who can communicate their point to their audience without using too much fluff and in a way that the other person can understand. Writing skills don't just include the physical act of writing. So while I'm writing, it's not just the physical act of writing that I'm including. A lot of mental process goes behind. I am planning, right? I am thinking very, very logically. I am coherently organizing my thoughts. I am presenting it in a very organized manner. Why? Because whatever I write will be documented. It's a kind of documentation. It's a kind of, you know, my words are, you know, uh, taken very formally, right? So something that I say, you know, I can deny that. But something that I write, I will not be able to deny that, right? So the entire process where I learn to write effectively is writing skills, right? Because you are communicating something that you want to, you know, to your readers or to your audience and in a way which is very simple. The entire process of communication is whatever you are speaking or whatever you want, you know, the other person recipient understands. So whatever you are writing, it should be written in simple words. It should not have fluff. It should not have all these flowery language so that it is impossible for the other person to make, you know, the sense of what you are trying to say. Right. So this is basically writing. What is writing? And why does this writing become important? But though having just 9% contribution in the total communication process. Why is it very important? Because again, it's verifiable. Whatever you've spoken, it gets verified. It gets documented. You know, it's adding volume. When you write something, it's adding volume to your words. So it's, it is creating in a way a permanent record of whatever you have spoken so far. So it's a permanent record, right? And the information that you have written is basically stored for the future reference. For example, today in the class, you are making notes. Now, before the exams, you know, you are trying to revise the topics. What would you be doing? Right. You would be looking at these notes for your reference so that you can revise the topics which we have studied so far. So written anything that is written, it acts, you know, as a future reference, a store for future reference at any point of time. For example, an employee joins a job. Right. And there are certain terms and conditions which, you know, the company, the prospective company has or, you know, the employee has agreed upon or employee has kept certain terms and conditions, certain promises from the company. So, you know, at either point, either of them does not backfire. How can we assure that we can assure that if it's written, if it's documented. Right. So here written communication becomes very important. Right. It is easily distributed. Whatever you've written, a lot of people, uh, you know, can look at it and understand it because it's written. It can be circulated among all of them. Right. For example, you know, uh, when books are written, when journals are written, when, you know, you attend some kind of meetings and MOMs are written. So when it is written, so people who might not be able to attend the meeting, who might not be present there to attend the meeting, they still are able to grasp the essence. They still are able to get hold of the information, whatever is being circulated, because it is written, it is documented, right? All recipients receive the same information, okay? So nobody is receiving more, you know, it's not verbal where, you know, something you've said to somebody and maybe some detail is missed. Nothing will be missed. The entire essence will be revived. The entire essence will be kept. 
the same piece of information will be circulated and you know we can not ask anybody to have interpret it in a very different manner because that's the same set of information that we are giving to everybody and also it becomes very necessary for you know legal and binding documentation too and right? so this is this is why the 9% of written communication is very important in the total communication process right now when somebody is trying to write something what can what can be the probable questions that a writer asks so you know when we are you know there sitting trying to write so we are often uh, you know uh, we often face certain kind of challenges and what are these challenges at how do i begin this right i have asked you to write a paragraph and the very first thing would be how do i begin this right what is my purpose what am i trying to write about right how do i make my point to very clear so that you know the other person is trying to understand how can i i make my message very very clear how do i create a logical flow so that you understand for example this is a process i ask you what is the process to reach the, what is the way to reach the library so very randomly you will not start telling me that take a right turn in this way you will be telling me a point of reference which you and i you know both of us know for example you might tell me the way to the library from the main gate or from the canteen right so there must be a very logical flow of information you cannot ask me very randomly from fourth floor just get down right so very random things will not be there there must be a logical sequence to whatever you're trying to say how do i say what i mean because i do not want my message to be misinterpreted i uh, do not want to create any space for any kind of miscommunication to right how do i avoid grammatical errors because it's reaching a vast audience it's taken as a very formal message so how do i you know uh, keep away the rooms to avoid any kind of grammatical errors how can i make my message very brief to the point so that it's understood right it's brief because when something very formal is given it is for a large mass of people so how is it that the reader is not losing any interest because anything long that i would be writing unnecessary details i would be including the reader is bound to lose his interest so how do i make my message very brief to the point so that it's understandable how can i create a visual effect you know how is it impacting the reader how can i create the visual effect which is you know because it dominates it stays in the mind of the reader so how can i ensure that right now writing is just not the process of physical writing as we discussed a couple of minutes ago it includes three steps and what are these three steps the very first step is planning we plan right the second step is we write what we decided to and the third and the very important step is quality control what you have written is it you know uh, uh, is it measurable is it standing against the quality check right so this is the entire uh, steps you know they, these are the three steps to writing the process of writing let's try to look at them in a bit detail so the first step is planning so we keep the objectives in mind we do a bit of research about the topic right so when i am here delivering you know i am trying to give you certain kind of notes i am here to teach in the class so whatever notes i will be delivering to you i have to keep in mind okay what is the topic that i am going to teach i'll have a certain kind of research that i might have done so that i can be here and give you the flawless information deliver you the kind of notes right so and i think about the audience as well okay my audience is a group of students i am here not talking to a group of intellectuals for example some information i will be you know keeping it uh, you know above very uh, above the edge why because i know it is a group of experts who might be able to understand whatever i say they are experts but when i have to circulate a message among you among you people i have to understand that you know it's a group of students that i am dealing with so my language would be my way of conveying the information would be suited as per your age outlining helps organize the thoughts so when i outline you know what what all you know i'm going to uh, give these other details i've written the details i have an uh, an outline which is prepared in my mind i've written it you know all the points have to be covered these are the agenda that i will be covering so a lot of planning goes before i particularly 
you know give something in writing fine the second process is writing so i have to you know the write the the outline i have prepared the structure that i have prepared i have to use that handbook of mine i have to work according to that i have to frame the message in the very same manner right inspiration is acceptable but must be carefully reviewed use the interview approach to supplement the outline so whenever the outline is prepared whenever you are drawing the outline you should be very mindful you should include all those aspects who is my audience what am i trying to convey where Uh, this has to take place when and how so all these approaches have to be taken care of as in nothing important is missed in my message nothing in my message is leaving a room for confusion right and the third and the last step is quality control how can be how can that be assured by rereading right by rereading my work when i proofread my work and you know i correct for some errors i just check what i have done what i have written what i'm trying to you know convey is it is it you know uh, on those guidelines that i have prepared is it following that structure is it you know that outline that has been followed so it helps me refine whatever i have written and i have to be very critical of my own book i have to judge it i am the first critic of whatever i have written then only you know i'll be asking somebody to Uh, you know i'll be expecting that my work is error free and if there are any errors if there are any flaws the other person might be the second critic but the first critic is has to be me fine so this is the writing process okay so i hope that you people have understood so far we'll continue from the writing process in the next video thank you everyone